Welcome to our five-part video series dealing with vapor liquid equilibrium and <clears throat> in it we're going to be dealing a lot with Raoult's law and we're going to be looking at a binary vapor liquid equilibrium so we're going to look at a mixture of two compounds benzene and toluene and move through that for our five-part video series to discuss these concepts so to start <clears throat> off would just be to talk about vapor liquid equilibrium and so when uh, a state is in, when a compound is in equilibrium between the vapor and liquid states, what that means is that the, the number of particles that are escaping the surface of the liquid into the vapor phase equals the number of particles that are from the vapor phase entering back into the liquid phase. And so it's an equal state. Both states are at a steady state in equilibrium with each other, the amount that are escaping are, is the same amount that is re-entering phases. And so the same amount that's going to become vapor is the same amount that's re-entering to become liquid. <clears throat> now within that, that's going to lead us into discussing Baruch's law. So let's go ahead and look at what we're going to do here in part one of this video series, which is we're going to derive expressions that can be solved for bubble pressure, bubble temperature, dew pressure, and dew temperature. And so it's going to be for an ideal mixture of n components that follows Raoult's law. And so let's go ahead and uh, unpack a little bit of what is going on with Raoult's law and why that is important for us here. And so for Raoult's law, what it tells us is that for a compound, this xi here, so this is the mole fraction of a, a compound in the liquid phase, and that when when we have a mole uh, fraction in the liquid phase of a compound, when whatever that mole fraction's compound is in its liquid phase, whatever the um, saturated pressure is, the vapor pure component vapor pressure is for that particular compound, so let's go ahead and call that this here, uh, that is equal to the product between the mole fraction of that same compound but in the vapor phase now multiplied by the total pressure in the system. So just to unpack this here, this is the mole fraction in the liquid phase. This is our pure component vapor pressure that is being exerted in our system. So whatever whatever our particular compound is, so we're going to be dealing with benzene and toluene. So xi, so the i here, this can be any number of compounds that we want. Um, within our overall composition of the mixture, any number of compounds. And so uh, let's say we're dealing with uh, benzene, for example, is one of them. So whatever mole fraction amount of benzene that is in our overall mixture, the pure component vapor pressure that benzene exerts on the system um, at a given temperature, that is going to equal the product of the of benzene in the the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase so this is the mole fraction in the vapor phase and this is the total pressure on the system being exerted by our vapor pressure now the really interesting thing about this is that this right here, the mole fraction in the vapor phase multiplied by the total pressure of the system, this right here is the partial pressure of this particular compound. So um, whatever liquid amount, uh, whatever the mole fraction is in the liquid phase of benzene, for example, and the pure component vapor pressure that benzene has, that is the partial pressure that it is exerting on the system in the vapor phase. So that's what Rolot's law is unpacking here for us. Let's go ahead and move forward with uh, the example of benzene and toluene to help us now derive, begin to derive expressions for the four 
things we described earlier. And so we have, let's say we have benzene here. Actually, let's start off by just drawing So we have our system here, and we have our, actually, we have our mixture of both toluene and benzene in here. So we've got benzene and toluene in there. Now there's a constant pressure being exerted and so benzene according to rules law is telling us that let's just call benzene um, x1 here so whatever uh, amount of benzene we have for the mole fraction of this mixture right, right here whatever mole fraction amount we have of benzene in the liquid phase and it's saturated pure component sat, uh, pure component vapor pressure of benzene that is going to equal the partial pressure that benzene is exerting in the system partial pressure of one of benzene now with toluene it's going to be the same exact concept it is also putting a, <clears throat> it's a, it has its own pure component vapor pressure with respect to toluene's chemical properties. And then that itself is also going to be putting its own partial pressure on the system. Which leads us to <clears throat> talking about the, the concept of bubble point. And so for bubble point, what is that and and why do we why are we concerned with it well the bubble point is the point at which the first bubble shows up in our liquid mixture now if we're talking about bubble pressure then we're saying at a given temperature so we know the temperature at a given temperature what does the pressure have to be to produce our first bubble in the mixture and then if we're talking about bubble temperature, we'd say at a given pressure. So knowing the pressure, what does the temperature have to be to produce the first bubble in our system? And so let's <clears throat> move forward with talking about this first bubble getting formed in our composition. Now, why does this matter? And why not just talk about boiling point? Well. The thing that is pretty fascinating about this is when that first bubble is formed or when any of the bubbles are going to be formed, the composition of that bubble in the vapor phase is different than the composition of our, of our mixture in its liquid phase. So um, if we're doing a distillation, for example, the more volatile compound is going to uh, is going to with the lower boiling point we're going to see more of that show up earlier and because <clears throat> it's going to boil sooner and so if we have benzene and toluene here and with benzene being the more volatile component um, when we reach our bubble point we expect to see more benzene in that bubble than toluene um, and the ratio between benzene and toluene in the liquid phase is different than the uh, the ratio between benzene and toluene in the vapor phase. And so as it starts to reach a state of equilibrium, we have a different composition makeup in the vapor phase between benzene and toluene than we have in the liquid phase. And so that's why we want to talk about uh, bubble point here and understanding what is happening when it first begins to produce the vapor phase for our system. So let's move forward and give some specific numbers here so let's just say we have uh one mole total in our system here and let's just say 0.3 of that mole is in is benzene in the liquid phase and that 0.7 of our moles is in is toluene in the liquid phase so how would we go ahead and set this up well 
look right here. So we have our, our partial pressures are both between benzene and toluene. That's what rule law is telling us, meaning that all the partial pressures have to add up to the total pressure. And so that is what we're, what we're saying here with the bubble pressure is that the sum of the partial pressures is the total pressure of our system. And the way that we get to our partial pressures is taking the mole fraction in liquid phase and its pure component vapor pressure. So that means we can just go ahead and take our benzene added with our toluene and that is going to give us our total pressure in the system. And let's go ahead and say that we have it at, um, our pressure is, let's just say our pressure is known, in which case we're gonna be looking for the bubble temperature. And let's say our, our temperature is, or pressure is 10 to the fifth Pascal. Well, now we can go ahead and begin to unpack this situation a little bit more. So we, have, we see that X1 is 0.3. We see that X2 is 0 0.7. And we see that our overall pressure is 10 to the fifth Pascal. So what do we do about our um, pure component vapor pressure? How do we find that at our given pressure? Well, that is given to us by the Antoine equation with the the different <clears throat> um, just with the, the different coefficients that um, the parameters I should say the, the parameters that um, deal with both with with whatever we have for our compounds. So in this case, we have benzene and toluene. The Antoine equation is going to say, given your pressure. Um, or given the temperature, but in this case, we know the pressure. So given the pressure and the parameters that are respective to this chemical and its properties and how it interacts, this is going to be what the temperature will be for it to be in the vapor liquid equilibrium. And so let's go ahead and move this then to the next thing. So the Antoine equation tells us that the log of our partial pressure, or not our partial pressure, but our um, pure component vapor pressure is equal to, and this here I'm writing out for benzene first, and A, B, and C are our parameters that are respective with the Antoine equation found by um, just many experiments and data that were collected. And for toluene, it's the same thing, except just with the parameters respective to toluene, but the temperature, because they're in the same composition, is going to be the same. And so here now is where we see that we have our temperature um, that needs to be solved. And so this allows us to then go back to here and see that we have now our mole fraction in the liquid phase and we're able to find our um, pure component vapor pressure um, <clears throat> because uh, we're able to then find the, the temperature within the Antoine equation um, by substituting in uh, what we know from the Antoine equation here. So then, because um, then we can substitute this in for our equation here with Rhodes Law. So let's go ahead and bef before we get to bubble temperature, let's go ahead and derive an equation for bubble pressure. And we'll go ahead and unpack that now. So our bubble pressure again is going to be the sum of the partial pressures is the total pressure in our system. So we're going to have a known temperature and let's go ahead and say that is going to be 323 Kelvin. And so now at the given temperature, what does our pressure have to be to produce the first bubble in our composition? So we have 
for our partial pressure of benzene, which we'll just call P1, is going to be equal to 0 0.3, which we saw uh, just from the previous uh, slide that we drew out. And if we go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and put this in, we are able to find via the Antoine equation um, that at this temperature of 323 Kelvin, it's going to end up producing the, the, the pressure, the partial pressure for benzene is 35,884 pascals. And so then if the mole fraction is 0 0.3, that gives us 10,765 pascals. Now we can do the same thing for toluene. So it's saying if we have 0 0.7 mole, uh, moles in the liquid phase of toluene, oops, this should be, there we go. According to the Antoine equation at 323 Kelvin, then the pressure, the uh, the pure component vapor pressure for it in vapor liquid equilibrium is 12,178 pascals, which gives us 800, eight, or eight, sorry, 8,524 pascals. So then the bubble pressure is the sum of the partial pressures equaling the total pressure. So that means that our pressure of benzene and toluene equals P total, which equals in this case, these two right here, which is 19,290 pascals. Okay. So what does this mean and how do we go ahead and derive a generalized equation from this? Well, if we're looking at this here, this means that when the bubble is formed, if we're thinking about it now, so the bubble has formed, and so we now have a particular amount of mole fraction of either benzene or toluene, both, in the vapor phase. And so if we think about the mole fraction that is now in the vapor phase, which is that first bubble that's formed, what is that equal to? Well, if we reshift things around in Rule's Law, that's going to give us the partial pressure of the system <clears throat> that um, benzene is giving and bringing to and exerting on the system, we should say. Uh, and then that is going to be the uh, divided by the pre partial pressure benzene plus the partial pressure of toluene. Which another way of thinking about that would be just that we have our partial pressure benzene, right, divided by the sum of the partial pressures, which is our total pressure in the system, and that is going to give us our what what is the mole fraction amount for benzene when in in that in that bubble when the bubble has been formed, which gives us here. If we divide our, let's see, 10,765 divided by 19,290 pascals, then that gives us 0 0.55 moles of benzene. Now that is incredible to think about because we started off with 0 0.3 in the liquid phase of benzene. And now all of a sudden, as the more volatile component, more of it has been, more of it has boiled, so to speak, but more of it has reached and escaped um, the, the, the liquid phase with its lower boiling point quicker. So that means that that vapor composition which was there was less benzene to begin with. We now have more benzene because we're, we're dealing with one mole of material, meaning that when we walk through this whole equation, we're only going to have 0 .0, uh, 0 0.45 moles of toluene. 
when we just run through the, the same set of systems according to Broad's law, total, and that equals 85, 24. We already know that it's going to be just according to um, the fact that we started with one mole of material, 0 0.45 moles of toluene. Um, that's really incredible to think about the fact that the, the vapor composition of the mole fraction amounts for our components is different than it is in the liquid phase. And if we were to go ahead and give a generalized expression now here for our bubble pressure, what would we get? Well, we're, we see that it is the sum of the partial pressures of our components in our mixture, and that equals the vapor phase, <clears throat> the, the mole fraction in the vapor phase of each particular component that we're dealing with. So um, if we have we saw we, we did that here with benzene and with toluene. So Xi is representing each particular component. So it's um, mole fraction in the liquid phase and the and it's pure component vapor pressure, and then divided by the sum of the partial pressures, which is the total pressure exerted on the system. And so that is going to give us our um, equation here to derive the bubble pressure for our system. And then again, knowing uh, the temperature, at a given temperature, we're able to find the pressure through the Antoine equation to get us to seeing what is the mole fraction composition for any of our compounds in our mixture. Uh, knowing what it was in the liquid phase, now we can see how it differs in the vapor phase. And so we're gonna go ahead now and move next to bubble temperature and see how we solve for that. With bubble temperature, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky than what we were able to do with the bubble pressure. So for example, when we, when we go back to here, we were able to see that for our bubble pressure, we just take the, the sum of our partial pressures and we got our partial pressures as shown by our mole fractions in the liquid phase and their respective pure component vapor pressure for each compound in our mixture. And then we go ahead and add those up. Voila, we get our, um, the, some of the partial pressures. And then with using the Antoine equation at a given temperature and the parameters for A, B, and C, we're able to get these as our results and show our final pressure. And this is gonna be the total pressure at which the first bubble shows up for the bubble pressure. Now, if we were to flip the rules though, and if we were to see if we had a given pressure, but not a given temperature, well, that's gonna be a little bit more tricky in solving for T because we don't know the temperature anymore and we have the pressure. So in order to get to that, we would need to use a root solver to be able to say, hey, here's our uh, pressure that is given. How do we go about finding where the root that sets uh, for, a, for a, what at what temperature basically, at what temperature is going to produce a pressure where the pressure from that temperature minus the given pressure that we know equals out at zero because that would then be the, the root solver giving us the temperature at which the first bubble would form at that given temperature. So, um, or sorry, at that given pressure and then showing us what the temperature would be. Now, in order to move forward then with the bubble temperature, let's go ahead and code out what we've done so far with bubble pressure. And then that will help get us to um, being able to do the root solver. So move this over here. So we're gonna start by getting our chemical properties um, for our uh, toluene and benzene that we're gonna be using. And thankfully, there's already a com compilation of code and data that has the chemical properties for these elements. And so we'll go ahead and snag that raw data and drag that into our code itself.
And then we're going to be using arrays. So we'll go ahead and import numpy as mt. We're going to be using our root solver, which means we need to import our root tool. And then we're going to be using chemical properties. Forgot a I. Now the next thing is we're going to just set P as our variable for anything chemical property related for uh, our benzene and our toluene, and so that's going to be any of the properties for benzene first as the more volatile substance, toluene second. Now to let's go ahead and just let's put in our. the mole fractions that we've been dealing with, which has been, um, oops. Uh, point, 0 0.3 of benzene, 0 0.7 of toluene, and up to one. If we go ahead and say, let's just confirm what our pressures would be. So for each mole fraction in the liquid phase multiplied by the pure component vapor pressure, which would be our, um, this here, and then we said the given temperature was 323 Kelvin. And here is where we were getting our numbers from earlier. So for benzene at 323 Kelvin, according to the Antoine equation, and Rhodes law gives us 10,765 Pascals, which is what we put right here and then and then just in case my mouse didn't show up right here and then for our toluene we had 8524 which is the numbers we were pulling right there and so that is um how we were getting to those numbers and so then that adds up to the total pressure so let's go ahead and create a function now that gets us to our bubble pressure our total bubble pressure and so with our bubble pressure, we know that we're going to have our mole fraction in the liquid phase, which is our X. And then we know that we have to have a given temperature and we want it to return the sum of the partial pressures, which is um, the sum of the partial pressures at whatever the given temperature is. So that's what that is right there. And then if we did this correctly, this is giving us our total pressure. Well, yeah, our total pressure. So the sum of our partial pressures for benzene and toluene, which is the 10,000 plus the 8,500. And so that should give us our 19,290 that we talked about earlier. So let's say for X at 323 Kelvins. And there we have our total pressure for our uh, system at 323 Kelvins for benzene and toluene at those respective mole fraction amounts in the liquid phase. So next then what we're going to be able to do is set up a root solver for our, uh, to be able to find what our bubble temperature would be if we're given a pressure from the onset. So now to solve for our bubble temperature, we need to ask how are we going about resolving that. And so when we look at our N1 equation again, this is showing at varying temperatures, it's going to produce a particular pressure for that pure component vapor pressure. And so if we have a given pressure, which is what the bubble temperature is asking, it's saying at a given pressure, what does the temperature need to be for the first bubble to form? So at we have our given pressure. So if we can just set up a root solver where we, we say, okay, um, we'll, we'll, we'll say at these varying arrays of temperatures, it's going to produce a their own respective pure vapor pressure, pure component vapor pressures for our mixture. When that minus the given pressure that we have is zero, then we know that we found the temperature at which 
our, our first bubble will form because they've equaled out, they've, they've zeroed out. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and set up now. So we, we know that for our bubble pressure, we said at a given temperature, when in this case we're doing 323 Kelvins, so at that temperature, what pressure is required for the first bubble to form? Well, we found out that with this mole fraction composition in the liquid phase, it is 19,290 Pascals. So what we're basically doing here is we're gonna do the inverse. And so what we should find is saying, um, if the given pressure is 19,290 Pascals, what should the temperature be for that first bubble to form? Well, it should be 323 Kelvin. So let's go ahead and, and define our equations and, and set up our functions here and then and with the root solver so that we can see if we've done it properly. And it should we should be able to say we've input in 19,290 uh, Pascals for our pressure. It should pump out 323 Kelvins if we've done it correctly. Now, we're going to go ahead and define our bubble temperature. And instead of pressure, uh, instead of temperature that is the given value, we, the pressure is the given value. Now, we need to set up the equation that we talked about, which was, um, it was gonna be taking in a vector of arrays for the root solver, but for our equation itself here, we only want um, the, Whatever the whatever the temperature is that gets us to our um, in, to our, our our root that sets the things equal to each other the well basically sets the the um, the pressure uh, at the right temperature minus our given pressure should be zero and then what we're going to return is the equation that we talked about so for our varying arrays of um, the bubble, not bubble, but bubble P, the function that we've already set up, minus the given pressure, that is our equation there. And then what we want our bubble T function to return is going to be, we want it to return the root of uh, our equation and we have to provide an initial guess and since we're dealing with temperature we're going to do 298 Kelvin and we just want it to return uh, well just we're just curious in the temperature itself okay did something wrong Put that now, if we go ahead and say, um, for our bubble temperature, th this is now asking, what is the temperature going to be if our given pressure is a certain specified value? Well, because we know that at a given pressure of 323 Kelvins, our pressure was 19,290 and some, and some change, we would know that if we're given this pressure, well, what is the temperature that's gonna produce the first bubble? Uh, at that pressure, well, it's going to be 323 Kelvin. So let's go ahead and see if that's the case. And indeed, that's what we find here. And so now what we've done up to this point is derived equations for both our bubble pressure and our bubble temperature. And now we're going to move on to our dew temperature and our dew pressure next. So now moving forward, we're going to talk about the dew pressure and the dew temperature. And in, in a lot of respects, it's just the the inverse, so to speak, not exactly with the numbers, but the con conceptually, when we are talking about our bubble pressure and our bubble temperature, we have 100% liquid, and we're asking um, at what temperature or at what pressure will the first bubble of vapor form from that liquid composition. Now, we reverse that understanding conceptually with due pressure and due temperature, and we're saying, if our composition is 100% in the vapor phase, at what pressure or temperature will the first drop uh, of liquid phase form in our vapor substance? And that is our respective due temperature and due pressure. So just like it was with the bubble um, pressure and temperature, so with the due pressure, we're saying 
at a given temperature with our vapor composition, what is the, uh, let's check, um, uh, saying, okay, so do pressure. So at a given temperature, uh, what is the pressure going to be with in our vapor phase that produces the first drop? And then at our do temperature, we're saying at a given pressure, what will the temperature have to be in which the first drop is formed? And if we go back to our um, just notes over here and in, in working through this, let's, let's sketch out a new thing here. So we've got our composition here and now we're saying this composition is 100% vapor. And we'll say that we'll just, we'll stick with the same amount. So um, 0 0.3 mole fraction of benzene, 0 0.7 mole fraction of toluene. The difference now though, is that this isn't the X uh, value for our rule uh, law, it is the Y value because we're dealing with the vapor phase now. And so we have our roots law again. So we've got our uh, mole fraction in the vapor phase and our pure component vapor pressure equals our mole fraction in the vapor phase, which is what we're now dealing with here. And the total pressure of the system, um, again, these this right here, the product of this is the partial pressure for each component. And now what we're, what we're saying here is how do we solve for um, what the pressure and the temperature is gonna be in which the first drop is formed. And just as the composition, um, when we move from the liquid to the vapor phase, the composition ratio amount of, of mole fraction amount was different for benzene and toluene. So where it was uh, less benzene in the liquid phase became more, it was 0 0.55 mole uh, value in the vapor phase, that composition changed. It's the same thing here. So the, the composition of the mole fractions uh, is going to change from the vapor phase and it's gonna be a different mole fraction ratio between benzene and toluene. Once it once that drop is formed, that drop composition um, uh, is what we're saying now. But now what we're asking for is what is the mole fraction and the liquid phase, which is gonna be our X values. Something that we need to remember is that the sum of our mole fractions in the liquid phase will equal one. And so that's going to come into play here when we say that um, if we were to rearrange this situation, this equation here, we've got our mole fraction in the liquid phase, which is what we're curious about is just um, our partial pressures for each component. Um, divided by the pure component vapor pressure for each component. And if we know that this is equal to one, we can go about solving this equation because if we've got 0 0.3 of benzene of the mole fraction in the vapor phase divided by its pure component vapor pressure plus the mole fraction in the vapor phase of toluene times, and I, I drew an, I wrote an I there, but that should be one because we're dealing with benzene here. These are different values, pure component in the vapor phase for toluene now this right here is equal to um, what our uh, mole fraction composition is gonna be in the liquid phase, which is equal to one, which is equal to, if we take out our total pressure, we've got 0 0.3 over P1 saturation plus 0 0.7 pure component vapor pressure for toluene. And now if we wanted to um, find our due pressure, right? Because again, that's what we're trying to solve here. We're asking at what pressure with a given temperature, what will the pressure be in which the first drop is formed? So because we're asking for due pressure, we want to isolate the 
um, the pressure, the total pressure. And so then all we have to do is divide this right here uh, by one and put this all over here. So let's go ahead and um, just express that right up here. And so our due pressure in which the first drop will be formed is one over the sum of our mole fractions in the in the vapor phase divided by our pure component vapor pressures and so the sum of that is going to be um, one over the sum of that is going to give us what our pressure will be in which the first drop is formed at a given temperature. Let's go ahead and code that out here. And so we'll move this out of the way. Grab our keyboard. So we're going to go ahead and define a our due pressure. And now what we're curious about is why at a given temperature and what we're wanting to return is one divided by, what do we say? Um, the sum okay, of um, the sum of our y divided by the vapor uh, the pure component vapor pressure okay at a given temperature there we go okay now this would be fine if we um, but we have to add in our our, our um, vapor components now our mole fraction vapor components and so Let's see here, up here we've got x equaling our numpy array, and we, in this example, we've said that uh, we're using the same mole fraction amount, but now they're in the vapor phase instead. And we're going to go ahead and let's just set a, a given temperature just so we can compare the differences between the dew pressure and dew temperature and the dew. Uh, the bubble pressure and bubble temperature and the dew pressure and dew temperature. And so let's say the temperature is um, 273.15 Kelvin plus 123 or 120. And so we'll go ahead and express that there. We'll, we can um, take this out now. We'll take this out because we've kind of walked through that and we can and confirm that that's working okay and so now if we were to say what is our due pressure at well 373 uh, Oh, I, d I already added in my temperature, so let's just put in there. Okay, so this is saying at uh, the temperature of 393.15 Kelvin, this is the pressure at which the first drop will form from our 100% vapor mixture. And if we go ahead and rerun our, let's say our bubble, P, and we've got our X and our T. What we can see here is that the pressures are different. And so because the composition is uh, going to be different in which the, vo the volatility and, and when things transfer from the mole fraction in the liquid phase to the vapor phase and vice versa from all from the vapor phase into the uh, liquid phase and with the chemical properties it's really interesting 
thing to be able to see here that at a, the same given temperature, the pressures are going to be different in which the for the dew point, the first drop is formed for, into the liquid phase, or if we're dealing with all liquid, the pressure at which the first bubble will form from a 100% liquid mixture. And so lastly, we'll go ahead and move forward with our dew temperature and that is going to be the same concept that we did with our bubble temperature in which we'll solve using a root solver to show us what our temperature will be if we're given the respective pressure. So because it's the same concept we'll actually be able to go ahead and copy and paste this function and then the equation defined within the function that we've already done for our bubble temperature and again just to walk through the concept here because we know we have a given pressure if we run an array of varying temperatures through uh, again what's going to be through the Antoine equation and the parameters that set that it's going to be on that vapor line equilibrium it's going to pump out an ongoing array of pressures and when the pressure that um, is that is input based off the varying temperatures when that minus the given pressure that we know creates that dew point um, when that equals out at zero we know we've reached the temperature at which our given pressure tells us this is when the dew point happens and so at this given pressure what is the temperature that needs to happen for the first drop the form from our 100% vapor content, well that will be done using our root solver with the same concept that we did for our bubble temperature. So let's go ahead and just change some of the factors in here. So we're dealing with dew temperature now and not uh, bubble temperature and because of that we're not dealing with the mole fraction in the liquid phase but rather the mole fraction in the vapor phase. So we need to change to our y value. This is still taking in a vector of arrays in our initial value. So let's go ahead and we need to change that. And we're not dealing with the bubble pressure, but what is our dew pressure uh, with those temperatures and in the given pressure? And there's our initial guess. Let's go ahead and run that. There we have it. So now, because we know that at the given temperature of 393.15 Kelvin produces a pressure of 157, roughly 1,000 Pascals at that temperature, if we do the inverse of this and say at this given pressure, well, if we've done our equation correctly, then the temperature that should come out would be 393.15 Kelvin. So let's go ahead and test that. At our given pressure, do pressure, do pressure, okay. All right, so this should give us, oops, Doesn't like that either. Y is not defined. I need to rerun my code here. All the way through. There we have it, okay. Wonderful, so our hope was that if we did, had done it correctly, we would end up with 393.15 Kelvin, and that's exactly what we see here, which shows that using our root solver, we're able to say, with our given pressure, what does the temperature need to be for the first drop to form within our 100% vapor content? And so now this series has walked through deriving equations for our bubble pressure, our bubble temperature, our dew pressure, and our dew temperature. And so we'll go ahead and move on to part two of this video series. Thank you.